The story begins with a blonde girl standing in front of a guy in a high position who is comfortably seated on a couch. She introduces herself to him as Riviera Blanche. The girl thinks that the guy is good-looking, but this beauty does not matter compared to his cruelty. Rivera is worried that she will be killed no matter what. This guy is Prince Croft. At the age of seven, he was expelled from the empire and spent 17 years on the eastern border of the lawless world. Duke Blanche helped the prince regain the throne after the death of the last emperor because he wanted to become the boy's father-in-law. The duke came to the Croft estate to teach the future groom etiquette. Because of this visit, the prince accidentally met Blanche's daughter, Rivera. According to the author of the novel, the tyrant Croft killed the duke and then continued his crimes in order to be with his beloved. The girl, reading this, was shocked. Did the author really want to kill all the other characters so that the main ones could be together? Now she realizes that she has been waking up for a week in the plot of a recently read short story. The girl compares all the memories with current events and realizes that she has now become a victim of the tyrant Croft. Meanwhile, the prince who is to become the aggressor has arrived in the Duchy of Blanche before entering the Imperial Palace. Riviera is the only legitimate daughter of her family, so she has to bear this terrible fate on her own. Her beauty will not help her because now she is defenseless in front of the tyrant. While Riviera is mentally afraid of death, Croft thinks that to become emperor he needs to know the rules of etiquette. But why was the duke's daughter brought to him, who is even afraid of his gaze? Riviera decides to overcome her fear and bows down respectfully to the man, saying that she will do everything in her power to help the prince. Croft notes that the girl is indeed elegant, despite all that has been said about her, but nevertheless, he needs to scare her so much that she runs away on her own. But Riviera is already afraid. She believes that the prince's eyes say that if she makes a mistake, she will die. Instead, Croft asks her to teach him in a commanding tone. As soon as the girl begins to tell him the details of their schedule, the prince sighs lazily and throws his legs up on the table. Riviera is irritated by this behavior. She doesn't understand what's wrong with the guy. It would be better if he killed her now, but it is very rude of him to put his dirty shoes on the table. Does no one care? All week the girl was afraid of death at the hands of the prince. The duke's daughter really did not understand whether she was just a crazy person or a real tyrant, but at the moment of this insolence from Croft, she could not restrain herself. With all the strength that was present in her fragile leg, Riviera stepped on the prince's feet. He did not expect that someone would have the right to respond to him like that, so he stares at the girl in a daze. Croft decides to ask what has just happened, but the duke's daughter smilingly informs him that even the emperor should not put his feet on the table. The prince suspects that the girl thinks he is not worthy of the title of emperor. She tells him that if Croft does not like her teaching style, he can turn to the duke. A plan begins to form in the girl's mind. She decides that if she disappoints everyone and the emperor abandons her and leaves the estate, then she will survive. Riviere is overjoyed. She has to try it. Croft does not understand the girl's unreasonable laughter and does not agree to a new etiquette teacher. The joy leaves Rivera's eyes, and the boy explains his choice by saying that he wants to see what she can do. So, the Duke's daughter starts the first lesson. Riviera warns Croft that they will have a short course, so it can be quite difficult and strict, but the girl has to teach him the most important manners. The prince can't promise his obedience, but decides that mutual understanding is still important. Riviera replies that no matter how bad the prince is, he will have to learn obediently. Croft is amused by the girl's defiant behavior, so he warns her that the price of Rivera's life is no different from the other women on the estate, thus hinting at a potential threat. Rivera is not lost, saying that such jokes leave an unpleasant impression. Croft replies that he was only joking, but the girl is aware of the danger. The duke's daughter continues on, asking if it will cause the boy anxiety if everyone thinks of him as a murderer. This conversation infuriates the emperor, so he stands menacingly over the Riviera. The boy confidently strokes the girl's chin and says that they will have to see for themselves who he really is. Rivera, who can no longer tolerate such an arrogant attitude, takes a swing and punches the man in the face. No one has ever behaved like this to Croft before. After the little performance, the girl announces that their first lesson in etiquette is coming to an end and that the boy should not put his hands on a woman's body. She bows to the prince and heads out, leaving Croft shocked. Only after leaving the room does the girl realize the danger she has put herself in. Riviera wonders why she hit the boy, 
but she is also haunted by the thought of how close he came. At that moment, the girl's heart almost jumped out of her chest. The Duke's daughter would never have thought that boxing lessons would come in handy. Riviera pressed herself tightly against the door, hoping that Prince Croft would not want to stop her. At this moment, a maid approaches the girl from behind and asks what happened to Rivera's hand. The princess, not knowing what she is talking about, looks at her palm and notices a bruise. The maid begins to worry that the duke's daughter has been bitten by the prince, whom everyone thinks is a border dog with rabies. Meanwhile, the girl wonders if she can defeat the tyrant if she puts in more effort. Prince Croft comes to the library to think about what has happened. It all seems absurd to him, but as soon as Riviera walks into the room, he immediately understands her motives. The boy thinks that the duke's daughter wants to marry him, but he does not see that the girl considers him a tyrant. All Croft can think about is the impeccable beauty of the Riviera. He thinks that he has long wanted to get married, especially since he is not interested in etiquette lessons. But how did it happen that the girl responded to his advances with her fists? A loud call distracts him from his thoughts. Croft's subordinates run into the library, asking if he really hit Miss Blanche. The boy is surprised by such unfounded gossip. Melek and Blake explain how they found out about the incident. Melek didn't want to believe that his captain was capable of hitting a woman, and Blake, who was told this during the tournament, didn't say anything. The prince's head began to hurt from the loud accusations. He explains to his subordinates that he did not hit the princess, especially since Riviera attacked him. But such a threat is very weighty, and now Croft may be in trouble. The prince believes that he did the right thing, despite the princess's reproach for touching a woman's body inappropriately. The subordinates were clearly tense because they did not expect such behavior from the captain. Melik, disappointed in the prince, leaves the library. Croft tries to justify himself in the faces of the two remaining men. Already furious, he orders Blake to shut up. The subordinate understands and asks what really happened. The prince does not want to go into details, so he says that he just had a little argument with the princess. Croft's thoughts are only occupied by the sweet face of Rivera. After listening, Blake informs him that a conflict with the Duke of Blanche will not be beneficial. He advises the prince to apologize to the princess so that the situation does not worsen. But Croft does not plan to do so, because he is the victim of this situation. The prince justifies himself by saying that he did nothing, the girl was just scared, but his subordinates do not believe him. Blake advises that princesses like Riviera Blanche should be treated with kindness, and certainly not in the same way as always. He asks Croft not to talk about this unfortunate situation with the Duke until he goes to the palace. At this time, Prince Pesalos was already on his way to Blanche's estate. This man was the prince's uncle, who tried to seize the throne by dubious means. It was rumored that Pesalos had poisoned the first descendant of the last emperor because he had died of an unknown disease. After that, the nobles had to choose either Croft's side or his uncle's side. It would have been difficult for the young prince if Pesalos had not honestly confessed to the crime. But nevertheless, the man did not agree to give up the throne. Croft decides that he should be more careful. At this time, Blake continues to emphasize that the prince should apologize, but he does not want to agree. Overcome, Croft goes to the duke's daughter. Riviera is surprised that the boy is so uncertain about approaching her, but despite this, she is afraid to look him in the eye. The two of them sit down at the table, which is lavishly laid out with a variety of dishes. Riviera thinks that the guy looks angry, maybe she shouldn't have beaten him up, but a short apology comes out of his mouth, which scares and surprises the girl. Croft explains that he is not yet accustomed to the local rules, so he hopes that the princess will understand his behavior. Riviera does not understand why the prince apologizes for hitting her. Croft is glad that the girl does not plan to report the incident to the duke. Now they can start eating. The boy carefully cuts off a piece of meat and puts it in his mouth. Riviera, who was watching, notes that there are no flaws in Croft's table manners. If the princess wanted to complain, she would only do so about the amount of food the prince eats at one time. This is probably because of the past customs of his country. Unexpectedly for herself, the princess asks if Croft is familiar with the art of dancing. After some thought, the boy says that he has never danced before. Croft is familiar with dancing with weapons on the battlefield. Riviera is glad that the prince has no experience, because he will probably make a lot of mistakes, which will allow her to be meticulous about everything. 
The prince notices that the duke's daughter did not listen to him, but the girl does not care. She wants to start dancing lessons right away. Riviera insists that the prince will need it when he takes the throne. The princess remembers from a novel she read that Croft had no problems with dancing when he became emperor. Many women tried to get close to him, even though Riviera was his wife. Among those girls who wanted to improve their social status would be Croft's future lover, Lillian. Riviera recalls a wonderful scene where the couple dances under the light of the moon. She must teach him how to do it. The convinced prince agrees to the girl's insistence. Riviera invites him to a lesson in the banquet hall on the first floor at three o'clock, clapping her hands in satisfaction. After this meeting, Croft realizes that the princess will not give in so easily, so he must make a sacrifice, despite the fact that he does not like dancing. He also does not benefit from the upcoming dispute. This can be called a bargain, where the Duke of Blanche fights Prince Pezelos. Such an agreement gives Croft a chance to get the throne, and in return, Riviera is to become the future empress. The prince did not realize before how much he needed help. His uncle is a duke and a worthy opponent. The boy realizes that if he skips etiquette lessons, Blanche might suspect something. Croft has only one week to endure, so he agrees to do whatever it takes to stay in his place. Now he has to adapt to the rhythm of the princess. The prince's subordinates were already waiting for their master. Melek waves to Croft happily, as if nothing had happened before and apologizes for calling Croft trash. The subordinate assures him that Riviera will soon learn about the prince's feelings. Croft is surprised that Melek knows about anything, but Blake tells the man right away that their captain has fallen in love with the princess. Despite the prince's reaction, Melek advises him not to kiss the girl when they first meet. At this time, Blake, who has added a little to the story, tries to hide between the two colleagues. Croft has no better solution than to send the men to the training field. The naive Melek thinks that they will be training, but the prince has something more interesting in store for them. Meanwhile, Riviera, who had asked Zeroni to find out what Croft was doing, was heading to the boy. The princess didn't expect to see him practicing fencing. The girl does not understand why the prince did not come and made her wait. Riviera finds the boy in a large hall with a sword in his hand. Croft is undoubtedly focused only on his opponent and does not see her. During a heated battle, Croft's opponent sees the duke's daughter coming toward them and reports this visit to the prince. When he turns around and sees the princess, he realizes that she has scheduled a dance lesson for him. His opponent notices the prince's confusion and realizes that he has forgotten his promise. Malik is amazed by the beauty of Princess Blanche, and Blake doubts that the girl in front of them is the duke's daughter. Without thinking twice, the first man decides to ask the girl personally. Melik approaches Rivera and says hello. The girl is surprised by the man's size. Melik introduces himself as a subordinate captain and says that he is from the East. The man emphasizes that he is not a knight and asks the princess for permission to speak to her as usual. Croft, who watched the scene, is not proud of Malik's behavior. Nevertheless, the prince is pleasantly surprised by how kindly Riviera responded. After waiting a bit, Croft decided to intervene in the conversation. The prince cannot dare to say anything because he feels guilty, but Riviera goes on the attack. The girl with the innocent face asks what Croft is doing here. At this time, possible developments pop up in the prince's head. The guy realizes that the princess can do anything in front of his subordinates, so he walks past the girl without answering. Malik is surprised to see the captain leave the room in a hurry. The man thinks that his master was just upset with Riviera, but no one has ever found out the real reason. The princess decides to go in search of the fugitive, but she didn't see where he was going. The girl didn't have to think long, because a familiar male voice called her from behind. Croft decides that he has to accept any kind of punishment because he is really guilty before the princess. Riviera sees the boy, but proudly turns away and heads in the other direction. Trying to stop her, the prince grabs the girl by the arm. Rivera starts screaming, reminding him that he can't touch a woman without permission, and reluctantly falls over Croft. As a result, Riviera ends up on the ground. The prince doesn't understand how this happened, and the girl wonders how a guy can treat others like this. Croft guiltily extends a helping hand to the princess, but Riviera is belligerent. She kicks the prince in the knee with her heel, emphasizing that she warned him that he had no right to touch her without permission. But something didn't go according to the princess's plan. Her foot crunched hostily, causing the girl to jump in pain. 
Croft realizes that despite the conflict, he cannot leave Princessa alone in her trouble. He decisively approaches her and takes her in his arms, despite Rivera's complaints. The frightened girl asks what the prince is doing, but he has no plans to let her go. He allows her to beat him later, but for now, the princess must stay still. Croft and Rivera head to the monument. He carefully sits the princess on the monument's ledge and gets down on one knee in front of her. His next plan is to take off Rivera's shoes and find out what the girl has damaged. The princess is outraged and asks him not to touch her, but Croft ignores her and takes her foot in his hands. At this point, the girl is almost furious. The prince informs her that fortunately, the bone is not broken and the injury looks like a simple bruise. Of course, something cold should be applied. The guy warns the girl to avoid such injuries. Now Riviera considers him a pervert. Holding the girl's shoe in his hands, Croft offers to take the princess to her room. The surprised girl takes the shoe, not knowing what to say. But Croft is determined. He believes that the princess should not walk now, so he carries her in his arms to the mansion. All the servants are amazed at what they see when the two go inside. Riviera looks so fragile in the boy's strong arms. The prince orders the maid to bring a basin of cold water. At this time, Croft gets down on one knee again and is about to put the princess's shoe on. The maid reacts quickly because the prince should not behave like this. The girl shouts that the boy should not behave so impudently with the mistress, despite his status. The maid is ready to give her life to protect Riviera, so Croft humbly takes his hands away. He did not expect this, so he orders Zorona to take off the princess's socks before using the water. When the prince leaves the room, the maid quickly heads to the Riviera. The princess realizes that she cannot say that she hit the future emperor, so she explains her injury as an accident. Zeroni decides that Croft is indeed a tyrant. Riviera keeps her foot in cold water, thinking about how weak she is that she bruised her toe just by kicking the prince. Croft is her only problem, so she has to deal with him. After a while, having recovered from the pain, the princess was sitting in a well-lit room drinking tea. There was a soft knock at the door, and Prince Croft came in with a maid. He wants to talk to the girl. The boy sits down across from Rivera and asks how the princess's leg is. Riviera answers that it is better, but it will take some time to recover. Now she will not be able to be a dance teacher. Croft is not upset because he doesn't really need these skills, but Riviera says that she can't teach him etiquette either because of the problems. The prince is curious about the reason for this decision, and the princess informs him that her father specifically appointed Rivera as a teacher so that the young people could develop a relationship. But Croft knew about it. He is happy finished to accept princess as empresses. If the girl does not want to do with him, her worth only in form, they will still get engaged. Riviera is in shock from Heard. The prince sees perplexity girls, therefore offers her to perform the ceremony before him ascension to the throne. Princess recalls that in the original, Croft chose her empress, but after wedding their relationships remained cold, so the prince got rid of it girls at once after meeting with Lillian. Riviera. It seemed that boy should be against marriage. It is clear that he has it now. There is no reason to refuse, especially since the prince will not meet soon. Love everything life. Princess understands that refusal to study etiquette will not save her, therefore agrees then to be a teacher Croft. The only what he doesn't want the girl is die from betrothal to the prince. But Riviera can't to say about it to the boy, so he starts think that her already someone likes. He decides to let the girl be his teacher until he gets the throne thanks to the duke. After the prince takes under the control of the imperial palace, it will not matter who Riviera is, eat his own father, and what they are capable of. Princess understands that boy is trying interfere with it, trust to get close to Duke Blanche. He will get rid of husband as soon as there is an opportunity. It a great start to becoming a tyrant. Riviera decides team up Croft and asks whether he can send a girl wherever she wants. Of course, in response sound statement. Riviera lies that it is an honor for her to be an etiquette teacher for the prince. Croft reacts positively, although not very wants to learn. For the princess, it victory. Boy informs that it is necessary to go to eat. He fits the Riviera and gently takes her hand, saying that she has none load the leg until the swelling subsides. The prince is careful, takes a girl in his arms, but Riviera emphasizes that the first has asked her permission. Croft laughs and continues to carry the princess. She should become independent by doing something with his own body to, to prevent such situations in the future.
The prince brings Riviera to the banquet hall, where the plan is to be made dinner. Their kindly duke meets Blanche. Man is interested in the prince's lessons in etiquette and notes that they must have become close with his daughter Croft. Reports that enthusiastic training and much more. Why learned? Riviera decides that boy has lost his mind, so he looks at the prince reproachfully. He, on the other hand, defiantly smiles back. They sit down at the table and Herzog reports that Princess Iru, despite his young age, may be to provide him heights. Croft worthy help, the prince did not doubt it for a moment. Riviera feels uncomfortable, but the guy quickly translates the topic of conversation. Hyo, imposingly holding a glass of wine, asks which one's news famous from Prince Pasilos. Blanche replies, No wonder that Uncle Croft mentioned Prince Azen, who is the only one survivor's heir, except a boy. But it won't hurt Croft get the throne. Riviera mentions that his opponent will die from the hands of the prince. Because of this, a guy will be considered a tyrant. And Pesalos, in the future, will bring his niece Lillian. Princess melts at the thought of Croft falling in love with his former enemy. She thinks that everything would have worked out for the prince if he had not killed so many people. Croft notices the state of Riviera, but his distracts Herzog's words, that boy will have confront Prince Eisen. Boy has as possible rather deal with this one situation, becoming the emperor. Princess understands that the events of the novel will certainly happen repeat. She wonders if Croft will go mad, despite their deal. How much then Blanche will be in danger? So what waiting for the Riviera itself? An idea comes to the girl's mind. How to stop it, Croft? Maybe she can stop course events, preventing the prince from falling in love with Lillian. Great plan. Princess notices Croft's charm in his look. He it seems to a girl impregnable, but Riviera understands that she has to run away from a boy just like Lillian. Nevertheless, the princess understands why the main heroine fell in love with Croft. Thoughts on what such serious men are wonderful choice erase common sense. Riviera hopes for the best ending. Now the task of the princess make it so that Lillian was not frightened, and Croft did not lose his mind, missing his beloved when she ran away. If the couple is together, there will be an opportunity to prevent heaps of death. Riviera, captured my own idea, joyfully reports that will help the prince to change. But his view, for some reason, very frightening a girl. Princess turns away and says, Croft, that after lunch with a woman who to him I like it, it's worth it invite a lady for a walk. The prince is surprised by this rule of etiquette. Riviera does not understand how Lillian agreed with such impudence, but convinced assures boy that it is indispensable part of proper manners. Croft accepts teaching literally, so he wants to invite Princess for a walk, but remembers that she has a sore leg. Girl confidently assures that May to walk. The prince insists on his, agreeing wear Riviera in her hands, so that she does not overload the foot. But the problem according to the princess consists of not at all in this. Croft does not understand why the girl refuses so stubbornly from him. Help. Now the boy has occurs more, more misunderstanding. The prince thought that everything would work itself out, but Riviera was not in the mood for it. Every time a guy tried help princess, something did not happen according to plan. Croft notes that body girl's unusual. That's why he decides that if she will continue to walk like this with a dislocation, she can a fracture will occur. The prince is worried about the condition of the Riviera. Croft does not hold back and takes fragile body the princess on her hands. Girl argue because already asked not to touch her. Now, Riviera, it is clear why exactly Lillian scared of the prince. Princess threatens hit guy on the forehead, but he, not reacting, answers that the girl was not harmed to myself. Croft allows her to pull her hair if she is very angry with him. Riviera does not understand behavior of the prince, therefore forces him apologize. When a guy fulfills the order, satisfied girl continues sit on his arms, parallel teaching. Riviera asks Croft to stop touching people. When her leg heals, to him there is nothing to worry about. But after how much? It will happen in three days or months. The prince is in full swing, serious reports that stretching long heels. But Riviera, it seems that he is just mocking. But the guy assures that he judges from own experience. The prince decides that this one the argument is great occasion to have fun. He is sincerely surprised, like a princess still alive with such a fragile body. In fact, she herself is impressed by this. Croft along with Riviera heading for Summer Terrace. 
they sit down at a small table on which is standing only tea, a set for two. Few minutes, both are just silent, enjoying the moment. Silence first violates Croft, who notes impeccable posture of the girl. Boy advises her to learn bet tricks to have enough power. Riviera is surprised. The prince prolongs, saying that, what about the attack? The most important thing is the correctly distributed force, which is developed together with muscles. To correctly choose the weak enemy, places must be had experience. The princess does not understand how to speak came to the attack. Boy explains that it is not easy to get caught. Surprise the opponent, being in the position she occupied, the girl is fighting him. Riviera could hurt neck, Croft thinks, if girl has such weak bones, then, probably, her worth beat palm, for example, giving a slap. But such the level is not satisfactory. The princess, having seen surprised appearance boyfriend, Riviera assures that he is not worth it to do such acts which force her to attack. Croft apologizes because only is studying correct behavior. Moreover, blows princesses remind him flight and landing a butterfly Riviera understands that in order to be a worthy opponent, she must become stronger. Unexpectedly, Croft offers a girl to teach her art struggle, those exactly thanks for the etiquette lessons. The princess does not know what to answer, because he doesn't have one currently needs this, but Croft believes otherwise. That is, the prince really offers Riviera learn it correctly to beat. Nevertheless, because of the principle, the girl cannot agree to this offer. She decides that can to cope alone, but Croft doubts. Riviera understands that with his own body, her heart even performs separate exercises. But if she wants escape, the duke will be angry. Girl recalls that in Croft's novel, described as the god of fencing, boy indeed skillfully owns weapons. Their agreement will remove any suspicions of the girl. Riviera wishes good luck to the guy, and he answers reciprocally, slowly drinking tea. Everyone remains with the personal thoughts. Sitting in the morning on the veranda, Princess thinks that Croft is not so much bad. Imitating her lessons, Boy learned how to invite to a tea party. Therefore, effort Riviera's were not in vain. Now girl is trying. Teach the prince by tasting to drink tea. But Croft does not understand how it is possible drink strong and bitter. A drink. Riviera. I was surprised by such a remark. So I decided try it yourself. Girl understood that Maid Zeroni brewed such tea on purpose that Very got angry the princess. Princess asks the servant to bring Cillian tea leaves, because this type is used at tea parties. Riviera with Love Brews drink while performing all necessary nuances. Satisfied my own work, Princess pulls Croft try a drink. To a boy, really, I like the tea prepared by Riviera. The prince thinks that must also do something make for your cute teacher. He offers the princess lessons in sword exercises, at the same time taking out a personal weapon. Croft warns that girl takes risks, break an arm if she is imprudent but such training will allow her strength in upper part body. Riviera doesn't listen him, but the prince continues tell the rules. Princess has from the ground slow to raise weapons to the sky, but the hands do not obey her. The sword of treachery as if stuck and pulls girl down. Croft doesn't plan surrender, therefore offers try again. He emphasizes what Riviera will be slower to raise weapons. Those stronger will be work her muscles. But a princess again undergoes defeats. Surprised boy asks if it is accurate and applies it all effort, and advises strain belly when she performs exercises. But the Riviera does not understand anything. Girl indignant that the weapon in his hands is like that difficult hurawamd. But Croft notes that this sword is not much more difficult from ordinary blade. The prince thinks that to raise him really easy than more, more upsets Riviera. In the end, Croft decides prepare for your schoolgirl's wooden sword. The maid, who watched what happens, does not understand why the prince got weapons. If him, I liked the tea. Returning to the estate, the boy reports that today will arrive him colleague. Riviera surprised by such news, but Croft reassures and orders her the maids should not approach the annex. Princess thinks that the husband will have bad character and maybe to harm to her people, but the prince objects. This is, in his opinion, that comrade only will cause irritation in others, my own behavior. From conversations, Riviera understands that, in them, a state will arrive a woman. Princess thinks about the danger can bring a stranger with her. Only scorched earth comes to the girl's mind. Croft reports that him, comrade, Redbird Kinsel, 
a famous magician of the East. Riviera with horror mentions that she did not hear about her in the novel, because who this one girl until what remains a riddle? Meanwhile, Croft's servants sat in a cell and did not talk to each other. The first to break the silence was Blake, who pounced on Melek, accusing the man that he woke up Kinsel, who slept whole a year, Comrade Croft known in society under different by names, Ominous Kinsel and she Black Disaster, but bigger part calls Crazy Witch Kinsale. Why did Melek call her? Subsequently, the prince's friend arrives at the estate. She heads to Croft, calling him your boss. Boy warns witch in advance, so that it does not create he has problems. Kinsale surprised by such a warning, but Croft, as if not noticing this, continues. He believes that the witch shouldn't be here. With what she is, of course agrees. She doesn't want to spend the night at the Blanche estate. The prince brings his friend to the Riviera. Kind regards Kinsale greets the princess, giving bow. Witch captures flawless beauty of the girl, D. But, annoyed meeting, Croft reports that Riviera will soon become the empress. Kinsale says that such beauty is not possible, appropriate only one to a person. Witch believes that a princess should enjoy everyone, but Riviera herself does not understand what it is about. In general is going language. Croft, set up resolutely, informs that accepted final decision of engagement. Kinsale. There is nothing left but to agree with the choice, the leader princess conversation, these two, reminds chaotic exchange of phrases. Croft hints Eastern the witch that she did not want to stay in the estate, but already had time change your mind because Kinsale liked Madame Blanche. The prince is sure that there are problems with should not be a friend. He in a hurry is trying push out an unwanted guest at the door, but a boy stops Riviera. Princess believes that they have not yet discussed everything, but Croft has already has time get rid of Kinsel. The prince reports that them nothing to talk about. Talk because sees that Riviera wants him to nail. But a princess says that they have to decide everything according to a situation that is not clear. Croft. Riviera reminds that the prince made and broke a promise at the same time. Boy is trying to justify himself, but the girl is patiently waiting for an explanation. They have find out at misunderstanding. Croft does not know how to explain everything to the princess, but he has something take action. If it becomes love interest Kinsel, she will automatically be a walking sacrifice. Croft is careful tells about his thoughts, about falling in love, which is in the Riviera. That's why he is, was forced to say that will marry a girl. To Kinsale, retreated. That's it. Explanation causes more and more questions from the princess. Her, it seems that she really is like Croft, Despite everything beating Riviera's plan doesn't work, so she starts to panic. The only thing wants the girl is give own place. Lily's and leave short story. Princess hopes Croft holds back this time a promise. The prince is forced to agree, so as not to disappoint the bride. Meanwhile, Melek and Blake were sitting on the stairs next to him, estate, and waited for the arrival Kinsel. When men saw figure witches, they pounced on her with questions whether met with Riviera, the guest is annoyed by such a loud noise reaction, Maleka. That's why he asks for it to sit Pelku. Otherwise, the witches will have to pull out tongue. Husband Blake decides not to get involved in the argument, so he greets quietly. But Melek does not succeed. Quench your curiosity. Kinsel answers that had time only say hello to the Riviera. But already assures, if the princess is out of sight, we'll spill tears. Our a witch will erase this one empire. The three of them go to the stairs, where one of the subordinates is waiting Croft. He surprised fast arrival Kinsel, but she is not in a kind mood, so she asks to move out of the way. The man is not afraid her, that's why he asks whether is planning which sleep Kinsale threatens send him to the east, if he does not lag behind. But a subordinate Croft doubts that the magic circle of women capable of it. This one audacity gets bored Kinsale, so she goes to the estate, leaving men from mixed feelings. After waiting until Witch calm down, Blake follows her. He offers her to go to the Imperial Palace so as not to stay overnight at Blanche's estate, but the woman does not agree. She can't see sense leave the place where it is located her leader and future empress. Blake is surprised that Kinsel calls it that Riviera, but calms down because decides that the couple has reconciled. Which alarming reaction subordinate Croft? Does the prince allow it? Its self-disrespectful attitude towards Miss Blanche? Blake tries quickly to fix the situation. Justifying Captain. 
he recounts Croft's words about the attack on him. Princess's subordinate assures that the words of the prince are true. You can to believe. Kinsale exhales, saying that it was necessary say first, because witch already planned to kill Croft. Woman goes to the room, giving understand that conversation finished. Blake wonders how much witch is planning to sleep. So he answers that very tired because of the morning using by magic. Kinsel asks to be locked up, Melika far away. To the man was not annoying her. When for a woman are closing the door, Blake is relieved exhales, hoping that everything will go smoothly. The next day, Riviera gathers with girlfriends at the table to spend social events. Conversations, one of the invited guests, is interested in what kind of person Croft is, because they are talking about the population of the East Bad Rumors. Princess understands that such thoughts were formed due to the slander of Pezalos. She decides that has deny everything, because he can't to allow to stain reputation Croft. Riviera says worried girlfriends that the prince is very calm, careful, and strong, and she remembers all possible buts, which occurred from periods their acquaintance with Croft. Another friend is surprised, but the princess continues story. She justifies ignorance of the local prince etiquette, but assures that it temporarily. Anyway, boy enough attentive and kind. Riviera satisfied my own work. Let it be good gossip will reach Lillian. Meanwhile, the surprised girlfriends are happy for the princess and want meet Croft. Riviera, thanks to your guests for coming. Invited girls answer reciprocity and ask Princess Orise. Don't overexert yourself. Attention Riviera's attracts Croft, who enters the hall. She believes that the prince can go to the training room rooms and without losing occasions, introduces him with girlfriends. Girls' fascinating look to the future of the emperor. Meanwhile, Riviera thinks whether she has prepared everything correctly, and Croft understands if we'll do something is wrong, him again will beat. Princess looks intently into the eyes a boy, as it were, asking him to demonstrate beautiful manners. Croft, as it were, understands that's why I apologize for the impudence. The prince is worried that Riviera's leg hasn't healed yet. That's why he decides take away her to the room in his arms. Friends of the princess from Pleasant with Envy looking at the couple. Croft reports Riviera that brought wooden sword. He carefully puts the weapon on the table in front of the girl, watching her reaction. This time the sword is not like that difficult for the princess. She is joking asks whether it will be considered treason if she sends him to the prince. Croft does not understand what it is value has during training. But Riviera explains that he does not see meaning in the lessons, if it will not be applied in the future received skills. But the prince wants to teach the princess fight. She reports that after her leg finally heals, she will be able to quietly to train. Croft is close at this time, turns out to be near face girls. Riviera does not understand whether he wants her to hit him or not kissed. But the princess herself is not in the mood neither for the first nor for the second, so there is nothing left but to swing a fist at the prince. Croft notes that dexterity Riviera enough remains only work on the body. But the princess already got excited attack, Therefore, Hostel grabs the prince by the hair. Girl reports that he may to fix the situation with an apology. But Croft begins to justify their behavior by what I did not intend her. I wanted to kiss, only verify reaction. He sorry. But Riviera remains offended by such a check. The prince tries to translate the topic and humorously asks if there is a tear hair is treason. Princess continues defend yourself now with words. Croft admires offended a girl. She used to be him, it seemed lot more cruelly. But now he sees another side. Riviera does not understand why her you can consider cute. Croft decides that the princess will not be able to train with an injured leg. So she offers to a girl ask for help in Kinsale. After hearing name witches, Riviera remembered that wanted organize a dinner in honor of subordinates the prince. The boy does not see this necessary, but a girl assures that closer acquaintance will be needed in the future. Croft reports that Riviera will meet with Kissel in three days, because the witch will sleep and will be able to discuss everything. The princess is not in the mood for so long to wait. Really? Boy sure that Kinsale will be so long to sleep. Croft explains that witch capable sleep for three months. Riviera doesn't know if it makes sense disturb a woman because her leg will heal in that time. Croft with the princess are heading to the library because have many work the prince's special pleasant help Riviera's in reading difficult documents which sent by Herzog Blanche. Also a nice bonus is that the girl understands everything, explains her great voice and calm tone.
quite a lot. Calm down, Croft. He notices that, even though stories about power conflicts do not seem so difficult if there explains Princess Croft it seems, if only Riviera was ordinary beauty, it would not satisfy him. By observing the focused face, princesses, Boy decides that the same time has come. Riviera headed for a new document, so Croft asks how much the history of 300 years ago is interesting. Princess explains that events of the future, a reflection past, therefore there is no nothing wrong with knowing history. The prince understands. The girl does not know what history write are interested liars. Riviera understands that emperors are described in books flawless, but about them, dirty side nothing is mentioned. Throwing down the empress, one of them sent to her death with her little son. Actually, princess sometimes? It's a pity for Croft. She assures the prince that not everyone is around believe in a lie. Riviera offers, take a break for food and some rest. Leaving the library, Princess runs into a man who reports the call his duchy. He can't to stay. Just like that is the death of one of the their own subordinates. Man strongly set up cause, Kinsel is on a duel, so he asks Riviera Grant the right to do so. But a princess is trying to prevent to this, explaining that which, subordinate Croft, the girl does not advise do hurried conclusions without finding out what actually happened. Husband annoying like that mistrust, he insists on his, because killed was completely unarmed. Kinsale did crime three days later after arrival, when Hamilton's corpse was found. The witches was no longer in the estate. Now remains a mystery. Why is she doing this did? Riviera emphasizes that, Kyot, to a man worth weight, because they can't just solve it conflict with the emperor. Princess warns if he's something if he dies, he will remain without the family coat of arms. A man can't calm down, but the girl persistently asks to give her some time to resolve this difficult question. Riviera is outraged that happened, so he turns to Croft. The prince reports that may fight from name can sail with the guard commander, but the princess does not want to more one of death. Croft is surprised that girl, I am sure of him winnings. Riviera convinced that her, the father himself, would have killed the man if that was maybe. The princess is lost and asks where she could have run away. Kinsel. Croft believes witch enough crazy, so as not to be afraid punishment, implying that the reason for the disappearance, the witch's lies in another. As the sun began to set, Kinsale returned to the estate. She was waiting for Croft and Riviera in the main room hall, sitting on the floor. When two come, witch's caring asks what happened to the princess's leg. Riviera, holding peace, answers that at usual dislocation. Kinsale convinced that they should marry the princess, closer to this time, and treats the girl's injury thanks to magic. Witch reports the end procedures, but Riviera is in no hurry to leave. The princess needs to find out why the witch killed Lord Hamilton. Playfully winding a lock of hair, Kinsel reports that did everything that from it depended on her. Riviera starts think that the man behaved rudely with the witch, but Kinsale assures, if the Lord would cause her damage, I would still go on my own. Two, but the whole the truth, a witch can't to tell princess, because someone did not want her to speak. Croft and Riviera looked at each other among themselves, not understanding anything. Prince reassures girl I couch, what murder local there will only be a guard on their hands. Princess slightly I thought about it, and decided again inquire about the reason for the murder defender own families. Riviera reports that if the Lord's death was unjust, Kinsale will be punished. Which surprises like that care for a third party, a person? Princess explains that man kept for a long time loyalty her family. Therefore, she is responsible for him. Kinsale laugh. These are the rules, so she's joking. Promises that wanting to kill Herzog Blanche definitely asks aloud Riviera's. Also, witch says that with joy will accept duel with the commander of the guard. Croft is upset, grabs his head. From conversations, three distracts a knock on the door, after which Blanche's maid enters the room. She informs Princess that some wants to talk to her. The maid leads her into the hall, completely frightened servant girl. Riviera asks what she wants her inform, but the girl can't to speak even words. Kinsale intervenes and says that maids are not necessarily about something say. Meanwhile, the Princess does not stop and ask name girls. Maid introduced as Barry. Riviera see her excitement. So he informs in a soothing tone that he can say all that will count as necessary. Frightened Barry says something about a witch who tried save her. So, 
the story that took place with the participation kin sale is not like that ordinary, as it seemed at first glance. It really liquid the case when the knight get killed for trying to file a servant, therefore a witch caring soothed Barry from tears. Riviera decides that the victim of a crime should become a maid princess. That's why Zeroni asks to teach a girl to everything. She also asks to invite Commander Jillian to her. As soon as a man enters the room, he looks at Kinsel with fury in his eyes. He didn't expect it to see a witch here, so plans to get Blade. But his stops Riviera, reporting if he, it will be immediately excluded from the Order of Knights. The commander, as if not hearing, shouts that the witch killed Hamilton. On this, Princess says that killed will also be deprived his own title. Jillian considers it is not acceptable that quite annoying Kinsel, what already got ready to apply your strength. Riviera emphasizes if the commander continues defend the lord who stained the name of Herzog Blanche, to her will have to, to take certain measures. Having calmed down from Herd, he asks what I slept killed. The commander believes that whatever Hamilton has done, he is not worthy death penalty. The princess, who has another opinion, brutally answers that it does not apply, husband. But the commander is convinced that which should not have been involved either. A man is a leader worth. That's why it should to take revenge for the unjust death of a subordinate. Therefore causes Kinsel for a duel. Woman gladly accepts challenge, but her is stopped by Croft, who going to compete instead. Witches, the prince understands that he cannot allow the watch commander die because the Duchy of Blanche needs protection. Kinsel is outraged by such a decision, but the guy strongly set up finish the case alone. Riviera understands that he cannot to let a day that Croft caused subordinate the Blanche family. The princess does not find better decision on how to grant the right to replace the guard commander. Plans with the Prince Riviera itself competes. That's it. Decision quite surprised everyone. Princess explains that the Order of Knights is located under her jurisdiction. Therefore, it commands Jillian take care to the knights. In the future did not gossip, but appointed themselves duel for tomorrow. Riviera orders to everyone stop and walk away. Croft asks for Kinzel. Also return to the annex and sit quietly. Fascinated influence princesses. Witches agrees with the captain. The prince remains in the office, asking whether joking Riviera. Princess satirically asks if he is planning her to kill. The girl does not have the spirit to joke from life, but Croft does not plan harm. Riviera doesn't have either intentions to kill the prince, therefore you can believe that everything will be fine. It's time for a duel. Blake was very worried that Croft could to harm Princess, but a guy assured that never will not do this. Subordinate advises the boss a couple of times swing the sword and finish competition. Croft thought if Will try knock out weapons from the hands of Riviera, maybe break down the girl's hand. He can't allow, that's why he asked to bring a wooden sword. The princess does not agree to an artificial one. The weapon she thinks she should use a real sword in a duel. Croft asks Blake to bring some easy rapier. Guard Commander Dures, who is a judge, it reports that winner will receive all the benefits and honor, but the loser has performed requirements. The first Riviera and Prince agree to the rules and are ready start. Croft asks for a princess raise the sword. With the first task girl successfully managed. But here the prince begins at the end own weapons put pressure on her. He laughs reminding that Riviera has raised the sword, but the princess physically can't this do. When they started to fight, Croft decided to pick a position the observer, so as not to harm to a girl. Him subordinates very surprised by such behavior. But decide watch further. Princess enthusiastically waved her weapon until Croft's sword flew to the side. She looks after him, trajectory, and at this time wounds the prince in the chest with a rapier. He is scared from unexpectedly looks at the Riviera, but the girl scared no less. Subordinates Croft amazed that the princess succeeded so easily to win their captain. Small spot from of blood seeped onto the white shirt, and the prince accepts the victory of Riviera, who has to leave in a good-natured way the boy is alive. Croft orders judges to complete a duel, but he does not agree. Prince offers enter combat, before combat, if the watch commander is not satisfied, something. But he doesn't dare. That's why the competition officially close. Kinsel quickly runs up to the princess and asks if everything is fine with her. But the Riviera is experiencing only for wounding Croft. Which believes that it did not happen nothing to worry about, especially the wound is small. Girl heading to the prince to, to find out how he is. But he assures that the applied cut is only necessary process and wrap. 
But the Riviera very worries about Croft, so Grabs takes him by the hand and pulls him to be treated before the estate. Kinsale notes that girl enough resolutely. Indeed, she stole it for a reason, heart of a prince. When Riviera with Croft returned to the estate, the negative thoughts of the princess intensified. She thought that do if treatment of the wound will not help. Really? Her will be hanged for the state treason, Riviera thought and did not notice how she began to take off the prince's clothes. He affected from such excitement, girls. Having realized done, Princess quickly takes his hands away and apologizes. Nevertheless, Croft needed treatment because he has bleeding. Boy alone takes off his shirt, and Riviera carefully imposes compress and place damage. Only now a girl notices that wound really not serious. Croft notices that Princess says about it as if upset. What Riviera really was worried, noticed all but the girl justified, if only she knew how much strong body has. Boy, I wouldn't worry. Now Riviera sees how many the prince survived the attacks, but despite for nothing, he became the emperor. Princess gently strokes the healed cuts boy, thinking about how much he wanted live Croft in those moments. By the prince's face already start drain drops of sweat. He again notes that girl again pause his. Therefore Riviera must again apologize. Dressing in a new shirt, Croft announces that I understood why the princess said that you should ask permission to touch something. Body Riviera guiltily raises look. Their eyes meet views. The prince cannot hold back, so passionately kisses a girl in the lips, and Riviera cannot to refuse. Therefore succumbs rush a boy. Surprised happened. The princess cannot to move. Croft is to blame bows his head to the girl, explaining that he felt that his kiss her. He doesn't think so. It a mistake especially since Riviera started first. But the princess doesn't think so. The accusation is very rude on his part. Croft asks for her calm down and listen him. Their eyes again intersect. The prince begins to say that Riviera is the first to be so careful. Looked at the scars? Boy, that's why he kissed her. Princess already wants beat Croft. Everything would be fine if not for the look girls. She does not feel anything special for the prince, she just felt sorry for him. Riviera advises a guy to think regarding personal problems. Life. Croft. It's funny because he considers everything his own life a solid problem. Even him native father wanted kill the prince. The guy doesn't understand what did it wrong, but Riviera meant that you should ask the other a person permission to kiss. He playfully asks whether it will not be in such a case. No problem if Croft gets it. Consent, princesses. At this moment, a thin thread of reason. Riviera's broke up. The girl will still have to him hit. Croft making excuses says that him manners have improved. But he needs more practice. Princess believes that she should have hit after all the guy's face. The prince laughs that this time it would be a girl broke a couple of fingers. Riviera replies that in this way to Croft will never succeed. Conquer feminine the heart. On the contrary, him passion will start him to hate. The guy apologizes instead. Riviera stresses that he didn't do that anymore. Afterwards, Croft wonders why girl wants like a winner duel. The prince explains that she has the right to ask for anything, anything, because let go his alive with competitions. Princess surprised that Croft agrees to accept defeat. But the guy doesn't care what girl against. He has perform a promise Riviera believes that it succeeded opportunity, therefore asks the prince to send her in the future from the imperial palace. Croft at the same time surprised and saddened by such a desire Riviera, but can't do anything to say Princess also begs conclude a contract certified by a magician. The prince is offended that the girl does not trust to him. Riviera says that she has it all reasons, especially since they are not close with Croft, but the guy considers otherwise, Troy Chuan, girl understands that I overdid it a bit, so I apologize for my caution. The upset prince assures that will find sorcerer who may agree their contract. Riviera leaves Croft, understanding how much hard understand a boy. The princess thought that he, enough cruel to commit what anything. If looking at the situation from this side, everything acquires sense. The only thing is that may to note Riviera is what Croft has flawless. The body is beautiful face, but the prince will never become her anyway. Princess being jealous, thinks he doesn't want to, to see how someone kisses him. Croft was left alone with the documents. To his office runs in confused maid, 
who worries that her missus got into the big ones, trouble does the prince not notice? This. Croft surprises emotion girls, but Zeroni reports that Herzog scolds Riviera for a duel during time and wants expel daughter from home. The prince does not like it such course events. That's why he sharply jumps out of the chair. Croft heads for the door behind which Duke Blanche is with her daughter, and she hears her husband quarreling over an act princesses. Father scolds a girl so that he does a lot what for her, and she, in return, cannot be grateful. Croft decided to intervene in the conversation. Duke and Princess shocked see him in front of you. Croft intersects look with Riviera, and, taking away look, turns to the man. The prince informs that it is not necessary to be so cruel scold girl, because shortly should become his empress. Duke changes anger is merciful and justified by not trying rag Riviera. He only expressed your thoughts on situations Blanche says, daughter that she needs to rest. Princess leaves premises, and here's what the Duke wants talk to Croft about Count Tesla. Riviera yawns deliciously, because her tired a meeting with his father, and he goes to himself. Duke Blanche remains together with the prince, but the boy cannot perceive the information it provides a man. He dreams to this one, boredom rather ended, past already weak as Croft arrived in the capital to get the throne, and not much time remains before it coronation. Soon the prince will return to his own legal place, from him kicked out seventeen years ago. Thinking about it, he heading through the corridors of the Blanche estate. The next day began with what Riviera arrived at the Imperial Palace of Louvance. Building it turns out lot more and more powerful than imagined princess. She looks enthusiastically at the palace and remembers events from the Reed novel. Croft is on his way with Riviera inside. Review estate took almost all morning, therefore hungry. They head to the luxury covered the table. The guy behaves confidently, despite the fact that he was not in the palace already. Seventeen years. Riviera feels how the spirit of the master blows from the prince this places but the princess notices that on Croft directed all evil glances of servants. In their eyes, you can read different feelings for the prince, sometimes it a little fear mixed in with contempt, and sometimes enough excessive attitude. Riviera does not understand such meetings, because Croft has not yet made it cause disaster. Princess I wonder why others treat the emperor like this. Princess understands, if a personal servant treats the prince like that, then from others you can, to expect more the worst, Riviera believes that Croft does not deserve it, because he not bad a person. The prince notices indignation girls, but decides that she didn't like it food. She denies it this, therefore gets proposal, continue late dinner. Croft suggests Riviera own salad, but according to the norms of the nobility etiquette, this is not accepted. So the princess catches them reprehensibly the view of one of the men. Princess understands that he cannot nothing act, but her got angry reaction subordinate. A straight girl asks the man why he started laughing. The imperial servant assures that he did not do this, but on the forehead, hostile starts. Speak nervous sweat, Riviera continues to press, begging to everyone to tell a situation that made me laugh. Husband, subordinate Croft only more began to justify himself more strongly, and the emperor himself was disgusted, looked at him. Princess can't any more to stop, if a man can't quietly to stand still, means to him worth to leave premises. Croft supports Riviera, therefore orders bring out subordinate from the palace. He just made it begging sorry. But already was late. Now that there is no condemning views, the prince can to relax, and offers do the same princess. Having come to his own rooms, Riviera she regrets that on the very first day, she kicked out the servant for being disrespectful attitude to Croft. She understands that she did the right thing, but she can't believe in what has been done. Princess planned to be silent, but it didn't work. Girl wants as possible rather conclude contract with the prince with the help of a magician and give own place, Lillian. More long Riviera can't fall asleep. She looks at the ceiling and thinks how much everything went wrong according to her plan. At this time Croft also suffers from insomnia. He expected that the present palace is huge a trap. A boy helps Blake, Melek, Chest, and Kinsel, but enemies lot more. The prince is convinced that Duke Pesalos already introduced here also, their people Croft knows about disrespect attitude subordinates. Because on him, they look like an unwanted guest. The prince expected this attitude, but still upset. He, he remembers how scared he was, 
was sitting near mother and Strong hugged her. Is Croft still? A little boy inside? While Croft pondered over the solution to the problem, Riviera, without realizing it, offered him, They need to get rid of it. Everyone enemies. In return, people close to the prince, who able to be allies, hold as possible closer. Princess really impresses my own genius. Eventually, Croft will be waiting a girl in the yard. Riviera, dressed in beautiful clothes, goes to the prince and asks how he slept. Boy Soft takes the princess by the hand. Croft understands that the patient Blanche is a necessary ally, but somewhat other attracts in a princess more. The prince realizes how much he misses the girl's thin lips. He can't take away look. In the end, Croft decides that him. It doesn't matter whether we'll beat him Riviera or we'll kill, but the princess will definitely be angry if he is hers kisses. Girl surprised by the ambiguous behavior of the prince, and Croft decides not to bother nerve princesses. Riviera notes that for the first time sees the prince's smile. What a pity that to a guy there is no one to share my joy with from arrival home. From her thoughts distracts question Croft of food. The princess, not yet knowing that the chef has been changed, reports that everything was delicious. Prince offers to a girl walk with him to the banquet hall hall's Heiner, which is the largest in Imperial the Palace. That's exactly it, indoors in six days, crowned Croft. As well as the prince will meet own love, Lillian, the main one, the heroine of the novel. Riviera surprises Magnificence Halls. She understands that original history will start in a few days, and the princess did not even live month in the novel. Riviera still can't get used to a new life, but she can't behave strangely because made to die. Princess mentions that Croft misbehaved with Lylan a day coronation. Nevertheless, between them arose love at first sight look. Despite what a tyrant prince, the main character appears as enough closed and mysterious Lady Riviera understands why Lillian could not at once open up Croft, considering their first acquaintance. Maybe the girl was just scared from the onslaught of the prince. Madame Blanche understands how many work her will have to, to make Croft be with Lillian. The prince notices concentrated view Riviera on herself, so she says that she can ask what her is interested. Meanwhile, attention princesses attracts a black veil hanging over them. She thinks that the fabric was hung because of death of the past emperor, but a maid assures a girl that it is a decoration for the future ceremony. Riviera does not like it. This element interior, she finds out what the decorations are answered. Princess Belinda, i.e., Countess Travitt. That more, more surprises a girl. Maid reports that besides Belinda, more no one has the right to be responsible for these questions, because after deaths, the emperor and his descendant princess was engaged in the life of the palace. Countess Travitt is the younger sister of Herzog Pezelos, who assures all that him indifferent to the throne, but in fact, secret is gaining strength. That's why the man sent his sister, who became a nun twenty years ago, to conquer the palace, and the black cloth was a gift nephew, who returned after seventeen years. Riviera orders remove the veil. The princess herself wants to choose the decorations for the holiday, so she asks for a maid call manager. Croft supports her choice. After some time, two men came and began to remove the fabric. Riviera with the prince carefully watched them. Croft says that, in fact, him don't care about the scenery. Riviera surprises such attitude because they are preparing for a wonderful events and know someone's of death. But the prince has own opinion on this account. Nothing will change the fact that he is the emperor. Girl understands that indifference, a guy conditioned, so that he has been fighting for his life for a long time. But now, the princess worth take care of yourself. Now, Riviera is tormented by doubts. She is in person. She is familiar with Croft, so she doesn't think so. His such a heathen, in contrast from others, the princess does not want unfair treatment of the boy. Girl assures that she does not care about the interior, but Croft does not understand why. Doubting? Riviera says that surrounding in every way, they demonstrate that they are not happy with the new emperor. Such guess knocks the prince out of the way. Princess decides nothing to say to, to prevent a dispute. Meanwhile, Croft gets up, dusty looking at the girl the whole time. The prince allows beat yourself, Riviera. How many anything, but he can't help but kiss her now. Girl quite surprised will hear. Is everything not going according to her plan? but the guy with every moment is getting closer and closer. In the last one moment, Princess stops him, saying that it is not possible to do, 
so Croft has to sharply repel and restrain own desire. They start for a couple to address attention subordinates of the emperor. The prince asks how Riviera is feels. What an answers, what chin of the prince as if done with became. Croft understands that hit the girl painfully, so he offers call doctor, but she refuses. Princess more interesting, find out why boy again decided her to kiss. Slightly thinking, he mentions that Riviera said that she feels sorry for the prince. He thinks that she sympathizes to him. That's why the girl starts to be afraid of that next to Croft. There was no one. In response, the prince is guilty turns his head to the side. Riviera decides not to wait, therefore offers change location. Girl wants to drink something refreshing. Croft suggests go to a small garden. The prince offers to carry Madame Blanche if her leg is still there, it hurts. But she refuses. To a girl inconveniently constantly accept help. Having come to the garden, a couple drinks tea. There was silence between them, minute silence, and Croft, meanwhile, felt something awkwardly because still wanted kiss the princess. Boy ponders over his nature desire but can't find answers. He knows that this pulse disappears as soon as someone manifests reluctance. But why it doesn't work with Riviera, the prince remembers how merciless it is in the East exploit people. When Croft sent there, he was concentrated only on your own survival. Performing this one mission, he acquired enemies and friends who were a ready cover the prince's back. Mercenaries became one of the last vindicta. The East is a place where people unite for joint revenge. Despite the fact that him comrades supporting each other, they grouped together for achievement, personal goals. Between mercenaries, vindicta formed special relationship, but nevertheless, they do not feel none compassion for each other. So mutual social work is far from this feelings. Croft wonders how much rare and valuable it cheap compassion, which people talk about so easily. It is, unfortunately, unknown to the inhabitants of the East. Prince for the first time got readiness lend a helping hand, even if it will not bring personal benefit from Riviera. Therefore, Boy believes that she deserves to be special. But the princess said that kiss belongs to something to another. Croft wonders why precisely. Maybe it lust. Nevertheless, Riviera always remains for him attractive. Croft decides for himself that the main problem lies in the princess's mouth, which beckons the boy to himself and they conceive not good intentions. Riviera gets bored a long pause, so she calls out to the prince. Girl explains if she would kiss everyone he feels for pity. Her would have to do it is with a street cat, a beggar, a hungry child, or wounded a fighter. Croft asks for a princess to stop. That's why he realized everything but he doesn't want to imagine in your head these paintings. Riviera asks, what is the lesson from this situation's mastered a guy? The prince's casual answers that understood, first of all, how big the heart is has girl. And secondly, what does she have? There is no desire kiss him. Riviera glad that Croft understood everything. The prince is sorry that it is for a girl. Sympathy is not as important as for him. But to want a kiss, he did not become less. Boy asks what his make to achieve the goal. That's it. The question makes Riviera think, but Croft does not plan retreat. Him needed clear answer. There is enough pressure for the princess offensive. She believes that kisses have occur between. By two, fervently in love, Croft doesn't believe it in her words. He doesn't want it to talk about love, so he asks for a princess, come up with another way. Riviera surprised hear it from, of a person who is in the original history killed the people of the empire because of love. Princess advises a guy first find necessary a person who will then become his empress. But Croft is convinced that love nothing other than illusion and deception. Riviera stresses how sure about it, says the prince, because he haven't met yet Lillian. Girl assures that despite never mind, she believes in love, so she won't kiss the person to whom does not feel anything. Croft understands that can't do anything, take part in this situation, so the only thing that him remains, this save compassion princesses. They agree that Riviera will be sorry guy until he meets someone who will do it more than princess. Croft sees off the girl to her rooms so that she could rest. Only he departs from the door, at his affect heavy memories. Woman assures son that he should not hate of the emperor. The man did a bad thing because he loves him mother. The prince sees nothing in these words makes sense, so quickly drives away memories. Subsequently, Riviera meets the maid, who is worried that happened from forehead. Ms. Zeroni thinks that do, 
because on the face to a girl available swelling and redness. Princess remembers that Chambermaid was secondary character and probably died together with the original one, Riviera. The girl did not think about it because Zeroni was not interested her. But now she sees and talks with Maid every day. So now the Maid is an important person for the princess, who is quite worries about the lady's condition and goes with her to the palace. Riviera offers Maid not for long. Sit down, Zeroni agrees, but is surprised because Princess never. I didn't do that before. Is she really angry? Chambermaid sits down, opposite own Miss Riviera, soothes a girl that forehead blushed because she hit it chincroft. Also, Princess quietly reports that she had an injury to her hand at the beginning meeting the prince because she punched him, and the girl scored a leg because pushed the boy's knee. Sincerely, confession. Riviera very surprises Zeroni is a princess asks if she was very worried maid at this time, but she reports that she was worried but she is convinced that Riviera beat Croft badly behavior. Princess laughs and assures that there are reasons for concern. There is no Zeroni knows very well a girl. Therefore, a princess admits that looking for compromise in relations with Croft. Maid agrees. Don't worry about Ms. That's why Riviera finishes important a conversation. Sitting at dinner, Princess reminds in the future the emperor about dance lessons, but the prince does not want to agree to study. Thoughts. Riviera mentions that the boy will dance with Lillian, so Croft does not have of choice. Girl convincing him so that dance is basic habit among the nobles as well indispensable ingredient etiquette. The prince understands that she is again starts annoy lessons to him. He believes that in Imperial, the palace enough many things to do carelessly catch a lady and circle. But here, Croft understands if will learn, can dance, do it's from Riviere. He imagines to yourself how to grab it, he will drag her along with him. That's why the prince decided agree to the offer. Croft suggests start in two hours, and happy princess plans for classes musicians to rehearse under live's accompaniment. Boy again looks intently at the girl and catches himself thinking that again wants touch her lips with yours. He firmly clenches fist to hold back. In two hours they meet in the banquet hall hall. Riviera notes that today is surprisingly windy. Did Croft come this time? Timely. Princess Multimeaning looks at the musicians, and they, in turn, start play slow melody. So, a dance lesson you can. To start, Madame Blanche approaches the prince to, to explain main rules. She emphasizes when he will invite a lady to a dance, a guy has respectfully bend over and, at first turn, ask permission. Riviera notes that it does not exist certain rules for this moment, but Croft can use the phrase, Dear lady, or provide you are honored to dance with me. The prince uses such replica to invite your teacher. Riviera, observing the formalities, fondly agrees and holds out his hand. Princess is proud as own a student. He does everything necessary, even without her advice. But Croft surrenders temptations and kisses Riviera's hand. This gesture is not part of the norms of dancing, so it is surprising the princess. She is busy observes further actions guy and tries pick up appropriate reaction. In the end, the princess does not find nothing better than Nipcroft on the cheek. She says that it is not possible to bite people, but the prince begs him. Let go, because pain becomes stronger. Riviera, I wonder why boy it did. Really? Didn't he have his fill of dinner? In response, Croft is displeased turns away. Princess understands that this time it failed. She joked because Croft was ignoring her. She tries remember whether was such an atmosphere in the novel.